Welcome to the Drooper, <laughs> Secretary of Transportation. Thanks for having me. Now, Pete, I am on, it feels so weird to say Pete, I'm Mr. Buttigieg. <laughs> Pete's just fine. As any good Drooper would do, I'm taking you to your destination. Well, I appreciate the ride. Is it true that you I drive think. a minivan? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love my minivan. Oh yeah, us too. Once you have a door that opens this way. Oh, you never go back. No, that's what changed it for us. Becoming dads just changed our whole outlook on cars. So we have twins, a uh, son and a daughter. One in each seat in the bucket seats, pop the stroller in the back, it's great. You're like, there's two kids, two of us, let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, if I can figure out transportation in America, we can do this. <laughs> Red light it's confession, how disgusting, dirty um, does your minivan get? Let's just put you? it this way. There's today's coffee, <laughs> there's yesterday's coffee, <laughs> and then there's the science experiment, right? And that's just the stuff that the adults are responsible for. Oh, that makes me so happy. Okay, this is Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. Good to know you. Nice to meet you. We asked what your most personal favorite piece of legislation was. Ronnie, would you kindly give us a Ronnie's review? Yeah, so I am very happy to witness a bipartisan infrastructure law like this being presented in my lifetime. It's amazing how the communities who have been a little forgotten are now able to catch up to the rest of the world. So it's, it's amazing what you're doing. Thank you. Reading your legislation, I really was hearkened back to John Hughes movies. I remember The Breakfast Club, yeah. John Bender is a character in that movie who lives on the wrong side of the tracks. Right, right. It's I mean, think about what that phrase... Unintended. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we have that phrase in our language, right? There are times when a neighborhood uh, or an entire town is put at a disadvantage because you're on the so-called wrong side of the tracks. And part of what good transportation can do is, is get you across some of those barriers so that your chances in life don't depend on what block you happen to live on. It's a red light confession. Oh. If you had one mode of transportation for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, uh, I guess the bicycle. I could always use a bicycle. It's a bicycle. Yeah. Interesting. How uh, should I, I function on a dating app? You met love, and this is yeah, what I all got... of us need to hear is to have hope for the dating app. Yeah, no, it worked really well for me. I mean, I had just come out, and uh, one of the first people that, that I really connected with was, was Chastin, and then we met for a first date. Uh, it was supposed to be a coffee. Okay, so you were um, like, let's be serious and mature and have a coffee. Well, well, and then I knew I knew what would come next, which is if it was going well, I'd, I'd brought uh, tickets to the baseball game. And so I had a couple tickets in my pocket. What was the moment that you knew I'm taking out the tickets? Somewhere in the middle of the conversation. I could just tell we were clicking uh, enough that I wanted to like talk more and, and learn more about them and spend more time with them. So the whole point of the online is what it makes possible offline, right? I lucked out. Like I... We had that amazing first date, and like within a matter of weeks, I knew I was in love. We are at a red light. Okay, it's midnight. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go in your fridge, and you can't mm -hmm. control yourself. You're like, I know I have to wake up early. I'm gonna be oh, yeah. puffy and swollen, and I'm going for it because life's too short, and I just want that delicious food right now. What is that food? Um, if there's any pizza on there, I'm going right to that. Mm -hmm. I don't even need to heat it up. Cold pizza, fine. There. Otherwise, what? cheese, I, I feel very strongly about cheese. I just found out I have high cholesterol, and they're like, guess what you need to do? Cut out dairy. I was like, no! What would one green step be like? For example, I'm like, oh, if I'm reheating food, I put it back in the Tupperware. I don't take another bowl to create more dishes. I don't, you know, use fabric softener anymore. That's the dryer balls are cutting it. But I'm like, that's my one green step. So it can be something tiny in the moment or something big. What would one green step be that you way, can I, suggest? I have to say things that kind of stress me out or trigger me. Yes. Dryer balls. <laughs> Why? I hate them so why? much. They get your sleeve gets all twisted up in the thing with the. I, I don't understand what they do. I don't understand what problem they solve. They Ch don't do their job. Chaston believes in dryer balls, so we have dryer balls. Sorry, what was the actual question? <laughs> so they're making thermostats that are smarter and smarter. You, you kind of make the money back pretty quick on your energy bill. Uh, and obviously it's good from a, from a pollution standpoint. Okay, so get smarter technology for your thermostat. So this new bill that just passed, the Inflation Reduction Act, one of the things it does is it makes it more affordable to make upgrades to your house to make it more energy efficient. Good for the environment, better for your economics. Mayor Pete, Transportation <laughs> Secretary of America, Pete Buttigieg, uh, presidential candidate who did so well, presidential candidate in the future. 
I, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I'm 40. We'll see. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Running for office is not a prize. It's, it's a chance to do something. One of the best ways to make a difference is to be in public office, but it's definitely not the only one. You never know whether the most impact you can have on people's lives is as uh, an elected office holder or, National or, intimate. Or, or what I get to do, you know, helping to shape everything from people's commutes to, to people's uh, international travel and their safety. Serving in the military is one of the things I admire among so many about you. Veterans Day is coming up. Yeah. What is the one thing to do in honor of veterans? For me, Veterans Day is a chance to be involved in some kind of service, whether it's for or with veterans or whether it's just being involved in your own neighborhood. I think is a great way to honor that spirit. I think the best way to honor people who served us is to make sure that our country and our communities are worthy of what it takes to keep them safe. Wow. That just hit me so hard. We have to have a better world out there that is worth the sacrifice. Yeah. I, I haven't thought about it from the inside out that way. We always look to the veterans, but if we as individuals can continue to create communities that are worth the sacrifices, yeah. it is our job to do that. Yeah. And that's for all of us. I want to thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. This was fun. I'll keep working on the airports and the roads and bridges and subways and uh, uh, excited for you to continue to reach people with something positive every day. And, uh, Hope we uh, get to do this again. Don't forget to leave me a review.